Hey there, I'm Naomi Kinsman, an author and the founder of Society of Young Inklings. I started Society of Young Inklings because when I was a young girl, I got the opportunity to meet an author and she looked at my work and then she looked me in the eye and she said, you are an author. Her belief in me allowed me to believe in myself. And so when I grew up and became an author, I definitely wanted to do the same for other creative youth. And that is why we started Society of Young Inklings. And now we are doing all kinds of very fun things, including an annual writing contest called the Inklings Book Contest. And the exciting news today is that it is now open for young writers to apply. The deadline for the contest is March 15th, so we encourage you to enroll and submit your story or your poem to be um, for the chance to actually be published in our annual book or on our website as a finalist. And also, if you're chosen as a winner, you get to mentor with a writer. So they're going to be able to share with you what's really working with your writing and how you can improve it to make it even better so that you can put the very best writing forward in the book. Finalists and other people who RSVP also will get the opportunity to hear back from a pro. So we encourage you to join us. Now today we are talking about similes and metaphors. And we're talking about this because this is a great way into just creating any interesting writing piece. But also, this is an excellent tool as you're thinking about revising your work and making it the very best that it can be. We created a small downloadable printed, printed piece that you can download at the link that is on this Facebook Live, but here it is here so you can see. This is something that you can use to play along, but if you don't have it, don't worry, you can play along anyway and then go back and watch this again and play along with the worksheet. To start, you're actually going to want a blank sheet of paper today. So make sure you have a blank sheet of paper. And what you're going to do, if you can look at mine, you're going to write at the top animals, objects, and characters. And what I want you to do right now really quick is write down as many animals as you can think of. And I'm going to list a few so that maybe you'll get some ideas as I go through these. So when you think of animals, what, what does a skunk make you think of? What other animals does a skunk make you think of? How about monkeys or raccoons or mice or puppies or camels? or bumblebees, which aren't really animals, but are creatures. How about dragons? We can even add them to the list. Now we're going to move over to objects, and I want you to think about objects you might find in your kitchen, or objects in the bathroom, objects in your bedroom, or your classroom, or objects that could be in a treehouse, or maybe in a, a scientist's lab. How about objects that you might find at an amusement park, or in a roller skating rink? Okay, and next we're gonna do characters. So with characters, you wanna think of some um, character types. So a king, a queen, a princess, um, a giant, a fairy, a wizard. What kinds of ideas do you have? Go ahead and write some down. Okay, now hopefully at this point you have some ideas written down on your list and that will mean that you'll be ready to start playing around with some similes and metaphors. Now similes are a comparison where you compare with the word like or as. So you might say the camel was as something as and you would compare it to something else. Now it's typical when we first start to make similes to go with something that is very predictable. So if I were to say the race car was as fast as a speeding cheetah, right? So we wanna choose something immediately that comes to mind and typically it's something that everyone would think of immediately. The good news is those ideas that pop to mind first are, um, are the first sort of fodder to get you moving to the next creative ideas. So the way that you want to get past your initial ideas to the ones that are really interesting is to just go ahead and write them down. Because if you think, oh no, a cheetah is not an interesting idea, then your brain is going to start shutting down and it's not gonna give you any new ideas. So honor those ideas by writing them down on your sheet of paper. We're going to start with um, that prompt, as speedy as, and we're going to try to think of anything that we could use as a speedy analogy. So if I was trying to tell you that a race car was as speedy as something else, what kinds of things might I put down on my page? So cheetah came up, obviously race car came up, what else could we put down on the page? Put some things down, 
okay? And as you start to go through your list, notice how you can get more specific. So instead of just saying as speedy as a cheetah, you might be able to add another detail. And this is where your similes start to become unique to you. Um, everyone knows that a cheetah is fast, but if you can add a fun extra detail, you can really make it unique and your own. Okay, so I want you to just press yourself for a moment and think, what could I put down that's speedy, that's really unique, that nobody else would think of, or that's really unique to me in some way, or where I add a little bit of my own flair, maybe your own humor even. All right, great. Now, the next category is as delicious as. Now, this is going to be very specific to you because you have a different set of taste buds than anybody else. So what is delicious to you? So you might think strawberries or chocolate or raspberries or um, some people might say spaghetti sauce or pepperoni pizza. Then can you add some details to it, right? Some people love peanut butter and banana sandwiches, or some people enjoy adding pickles to the strangest things, right? So think about what's really delicious to you. One thing I wrote down was as delicious as rain-kissed raspberries after a summer storm. Notice how that's specific. It's not just rain-kissed raspberries. And rain-kissed raspberries is maybe something you wouldn't think of right away, right? If you think of rain, you might not think of it as something delicious, but if you add it to raspberries and then you think about that summer storm, now you're starting to really find an image that might catch your imagination in a new way. All right, we're going to try one more, as wild as. I wrote this down and I was thinking about um, a band of monkeys sort of playing around in the trees and throwing bananas at each other and making faces and being silly and swinging around, chattering. Um, think about when you think of wild, what that makes you think of. It could be kind of wild silly, or it could be wild like ferocious and fierce. Think about what sorts of words and comparisons that you can think of that are wild, all right? Good, and again, remember, you wanna make it as specific as you can. Now these boxes are not just small, they have a little bit of space in them, and that is so that you can continue to add to them. But the great thing about this being a printable is you can print it as many times as you want so that you can really add those details, right? Now, remember how we went through our list of animals, objects, and characters? So you have some things down on your list. I want you to look back at that list now and just choose one. Choose one of your animals, one of your objects, one of your characters, and see if you can imagine a simile that would go with that character, animal, or object, okay? And remember all the things that we just played with. How can you get past that initial thought and get to something that's very specific and interesting? If you want, you can go ahead and pause me. If you're watching live, you can't pause. You can come back and do this again. But I want you to, to really take the time to think about how you can make a really interesting simile. Now, we're going to move on to metaphors, which are similar to similes, but a little bit different. Um, when I first talk about metaphors with people, sometimes they, um, especially with my students, sometimes they are struggling to say, it feels strange to say that the storm was a raging lion or um, the donkey was, um, let's see, the donkey was a stubborn three-year-old, right? It feels a little strange because the donkey isn't a stubborn three-year-old and the storm isn't a raging lion exactly. But we're using those words to try to help us really show what something feels like and what the experience of something is like. So on the page, we have three different things that are sort of a little bit easy to play around with as you're thinking about some metaphors. We have the storm is, we have my puppy is, and we have the secret is. And the fun thing about all of these is that they can be different kinds of things to different people. So a storm might be a really light, like the summer storm we were talking about, a very light storm. Or it could be a fierce hurricane, right? It could be something that's overwhelming and so big and fierce that we have to choose something that's a really, really wild analogy. My puppy could be sweet and snuggly and wonderful and warm, or my puppy could be a disaster, right? I wrote down, today my puppy is a mud-filled super soaker. I was imagining mud splattered all over the walls, and I was thinking about, wouldn't that be a fun way to think about my puppy? Okay, so, and the last one, the secret, I just wanted to point out, the secret is, it could be a tiny secret, it can be a big secret, and what are some of the metaphors that you can come up with for your secret? Okay. 
Now, we've done a little bit of thinking about metaphors and similes, and we're going to now build a few similes. So at the bottom of the page, you'll see that I have you look at your own writing, and you may not have um, your writing with you right now, but you can always come back and do this. Um, let me show you the example that we have here. So let's say I was trying to tell you about my library book, and I wanted to tell you how hard that book is to put down. So I was thinking about what would be a surprising comparison for a book. Well, there's lots of things, and when you think, sometimes when somebody asks you what's something that would be surprising, your brain goes blank because you think, well, nothing's a surprise, because if I thought of it, it's definitely not surprising, right? But when we say that word surprising here, what we're trying to say is what would be a little bit of a tangent? How could you sort of follow your thinking a little bit farther? And when you think of something being hard to put down, what else might you be holding in your hand? And as I thought about that, it's January right now as I'm recording this, so I'm thinking about being in the snow. I was just coming back from the holidays and I, I got some chance to be in the very cold weather. What was hard to put down? Well, a hot cocoa with a peppermint stick in it, absolutely difficult to put down. I want to hold it in my hands, not only because it's delicious and tastes great, but because it's warm and it keeps me all nice and cozy, right? So my library book is hard to put down, is as hard to put down as peppermint hot cocoa. But even that might not be interesting enough. Maybe I want to add something a little bit more, another detail to really make it mine. So what I added was, after building a family of snowmen on an icy January day. So now my simile is, my library book is as hard to put down as peppermint hot cocoa after building a family of snowmen on an icy January day. Now I have something that's my, my own. I probably haven't, nobody else has written it exactly that way. And that's how you make your own simile. Sometimes you want to do something that's unique, that's your own. That's how you do it. You just add detail by detail and you really make it personal and unique to you. Something that really says what exactly you want to say. We're going to do one more with metaphor. You can always come back and do some more um, similes later when you have the chance. With a metaphor, I want you to think about what quality that you're trying to highlight, right? Um, this, it, it will help you kind of figure out what sort of simile or what kind of comparison that you want to come up with here. So if I was to say a blank page, and I wanted to highlight that a blank page has so much possibility. The magic of stories is possible on this blank page. I have this page, I can put anything down, it's a magical space. So how could I, highlight that magical quality to a blank page. What would be a comparison? Well, um, I thought of a number of things and I feel like a flying carpet is an interesting idea. This idea of being swept away into a place where you could never go in any other way. But a flying carpet is probably something a lot of people would think of. So how could I make that its own its own interesting um, visual image. And the thing I thought of was skimming over a starlit sea. And I also thought a little bit about alliteration there. I wanted my S's to kind of pull that image all the way through to really make it fun to say out loud. So if you put it all together, it says, my blank page is a flying carpet skimming over a starlit sea. And now I have something that is a little bit special. It's, it's my own unique metaphor. You can do it too with ideas that are in your own writing, whether it's with poems or with stories. And especially with stories, you want to take those moments when you really can show us how a person is feeling or how, um, how an experience um, takes a character, whether it's um, if it's really overwhelming, like a storm is super overwhelming and it causes a character to feel really small or scared. Um, some of those types of details will really help to add to the tone in your story. And you don't always want to have similes and metaphors everywhere, but you do want to have them to highlight those moments that are very special where you want the reader to stop and pay attention. When you use words that surprise a reader, that catch their eye and their imagination, that's when they really stop and they'll pay attention to what you're putting on the page. And so that's how you kind of shine a spotlight on a particular moment. So let's say you have a really emotional moment of your story. You have the climax of your story, or you have a point where your character's feelings get desperately hurt, or you have a point where um, they're fighting with a friend and you really want to show how they feel inside. Those are great moments for you to add in some um, figurative language like this. Now, before we close down today, I want to speak to something that I think is really, really important. 
Figurative language is the sort of thing that you can start to feel you're right or wrong, right? Is it actually a simile? Did I do it right? Is it a metaphor? Or maybe is it something a little bit different? In fact, as I was putting together this cheat sheet for you today, I actually had a moment like that. I wrote this. The rain was a tribe of acrobatic mice tap dancing on my roof. Now, I knew that was definitely a metaphor because I was combining two things. I was juxtaposing two ideas on top of each other. But it also was personification because um, I was making the rain into something that had um, a body and, and feet and all of that. So, so I wasn't sure, is it exactly a metaphor or am I adding something new into it? And yes, I'm absolutely adding a new element into it. But the point is, isn't checking off a box and saying, oh, this is perfectly a metaphor or this is perfectly a simile without anything else mixed up inside of it. But it's really about saying what it is that you want to say in the exact words that fit what you're, the idea that you're trying to express. So as you think about these different ideas that are coming to mind, I, le I left you a bunch of lines here at the bottom of your page because I want you to feel free to just let all the rules go. Don't worry about what type of figurative language you're using, but think about how can I use a comparison to say exactly what I mean in this one part of my story or my poem? Because that's really the point of using this kind of language. It's really making sure that you create these pictures in your readers' minds that only you can create. That is our um, Facebook Live for today. It's your chance to play around a little bit more with your words, especially if you're working on the Inklings book contest um, and something, a poem or a story for the application. We really would love for you to take some time and think about how you can use your words to the very best ability to really polish them up and make them shine. Now, in the comment section below, I would love it if you would share your favorite simile or metaphor that you created today. And if you need to take a little bit of time and create one and then come back and post it, we would love for you to do that. And the next step for you is to go back. You can watch this over again because it will be here for you. Um, it's also going to be shared on our website so you can watch it there too. You might be watching it there right now. And you can go through and you can go um, develop more similes and more metaphors. You can print the worksheet again and play with new ideas. You can even cross out the as speedy as or as delicious as and put something new in there so that you can explain, explore different kinds of possibilities. And as always, we're so grateful that you joined us here today. Don't forget the Inklings book contest is now open. So we would love it if you would go over to younginklings.org and sign up. Remember, if you RSVP, then you can be guaranteed an opportunity to hear back from a pro about your application. You can go over and do that today. You don't have to have anything written yet. Just put, put your um, intention out there that you're going to put a story or a poem into the contest. And then you have some time to actually follow up and get your work really ready and submit it. If you were inspired today, if your creativity was sparked, we would be so grateful if you would share this Facebook Live with your friends, with your family, with your community. The thing is, is when you help us build bridges with educators or advocates or parents, you ultimately help us reach the young creatives who are like that little girl that I used to be, who need to know that the power of their stories matters, that their voices are important, and we're looking to find ways to connect with as many creative youth as we can to support them, and we would love it if you would help us by sharing this content. And we really are so grateful that you are here today. Don't forget, we'll be back again next week on Tuesday at 2.30. We're so glad you took the time to be with us here today. See you soon.